Do PV Sheffield drivers work for Metal Tone? Let's fucking find out. I've spent some time researching online in regards to the Sheffields, and I've found a lot of mixed reviews. Some people really swear by them. Other people think they're hot garbage juice. You kinda get what you get. Now, at the time, I didn't have a cabinet and I had just purchased the head behind me off someone online. Now, I brought it home and I didn't have anything to plug it into. That sucked. Imagine bringing home the amp that you've been waiting for for like, fucking ever. And you got nothing to plug it into. So I'm looking online, I'm trying to find something. I came across a PV MS 412. It's loaded with Sheffield 1290s. Now, when I play through it in the room, it sounds okay. There's really nothing that really stands out too much. It's got a lot of bite, and that's kind of useful, you know what I mean, when you're playing live or in a room, you know, with a drummer who's got loud ass drums. I brought the cabinet into my studio and I mic'd it up. I used an Audix F5. The tone seemed kind of fizzy to me and definitely harsh in a way that I didn't feel like it was able to be tamed. Where you would notch one frequency, it was like there was 16 others that were just acting up. And even after the standard high and low pass filters, I just didn't really seem to enjoy what was happening. So what I did was I set the amp to pretty basic settings, the gain to taste, lows, mids, and highs were right around five, maybe a little under. I had the post gain at four. Now what I did notice with this cabinet is when it was lower, it really seemed harsh and fizzy but when I kind of turned it up to four or pushed it a little harder it really started to push and drive in a way that wasn't so fizzy and it seemed like it was starting to push over top of that so I left it just around four the resonance was at four and the presence was right around five I did use a knockoff tube screamer running into it with the drive all the way down and I would say the level was about three o'clock. It wasn't all the way up. Tone was about 12 o'clock on the pedal. From the amp, we went out to the cabinet where I have it mic'd up in the lower right-hand side, which after I opened up the cabinet, I saw that was the first speaker to receive power. I just figured that would probably be the best bet. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that a common thing that you find that the first driver to receive power is the one that sounds the best. There's three miking positions in this video. The first one you're going to see is an F5 straight on, about 75% of its way on the cap and then 30% on the cone itself. The second one, I went further left and I believe it was more of like 90% cone with 10% cap. So it was a lot darker. For the last tone, I took it straight center and then I cocked it about 45 degrees to the left. And uh, these are the tones. You be the judge. Do you think this cab is usable? I don't know. Let's see. So I would say those results are pretty interesting. I personally didn't expect to get the best tone on the first mic placement that I put on there. I mean, that's the one that seemed to do the best in the mix on its own. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. If you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe and like the video. Feel free to comment on your thoughts of which mic placement you preferred. Anyway, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, enjoy your time with your loved ones this year, and I'll see you guys in the next video.